Welcome back. I'm Barry Craig. Not since the heyday of Henry Clay and the Whigs in the 1830s and 1840s have Kentucky Democrats been in such dire political straits. But Republicans, hold on to your hats. My guest today says the Democratic Party is poised for a big-time comeback. Now, you might say he's whistling past the cemetery. After all, he is chair of the Livingston County Democratic Party. He's a member of the Kentucky Democratic Party's Central Executive Committee. He's also a campaign consultant who has been successful on at least two candidates. Oh, and by the way, he's 24 years old. Daniel Hurt, welcome to the program. Thank you, Barry. It's a pleasure to be here. Let's begin by crunching the numbers. Okay. As unpleasant as you will find them. That's the business that I'm in at this point. <laughs> Both of Kentucky's senators, Republicans, five of the six members of the Kentucky congressional delegation, Republican. Donald Trump won 62.5% of Kentucky's vote and carried 118 of 120 counties. The Trump tsunami flipped a 53 to 47 Democratic House 66 to 34 Republican. The Republicans maintained their 27 64 to 11. 36. Sorry, 64 to 36. I misspoke. 27 to 11 uh, Senate majority. Uh, more and more county officials are Republicans. And Mitch McConnell said at Fancy Farm that uh, a majority of Kentucky County judge executives are Republicans. So, where does the comeback start? What a great start <laughs> for this, I just want to say. But the tide will turn, everything is cyclical. You're seeing with these issues today, issues that are going to affect hundreds of thousands of Kentuckians with health insurance, you know, working families and pension issue with teachers and state workers, folks that have, you know, risked their lives every day protecting us now are relying on that pension. And it's the Republican Party that's wanting to cut those. It's the Republican Party that wants to do away with those. Democrats are going to stand with working families and you're seeing this cycle Democrats are coming out of the woodwork to run. Uh, they've been inspired by what they've seen. You know, admittedly, we have been, you know, uh, complacent. We, you know, we paid attention to national elections and we let the ball get away. But I can tell you, as a young Democrat getting involved, it's not just me, but all of the young Democrats that are running and are actively getting engaged with the party, you're going to see a new kind of strategy come into play in 2018. And I think Frankfurt and Washington will be very surprised with Kentucky. Just look at Virginia. You say it can't be done, we're working on flipping that house over there. You touched on a topic especially <coughs> to me. You're a young Democrat, president of the West Kentucky Young Democrats. That's right. And perhaps will toss your hat in the ring for president of the state Young Democrats. I am, in fact. You are. I'm you're, going to you're, run. You're a candidate. Yes. Okay. As you know from crunching the numbers, that young people don't vote in the same numbers that we oldsters do. I think part of that is the fact that that's all we can do. We're too old to do other things, <laughs> so we just simply vote. So I think a key to the future of any political party is getting young people involved. Uh, you took an inactive Young Democrats bunch here in Western Kentucky and got them active. So what is the secret to getting young people off their dust and involved in politics. Why do young people just don't care about politics? There's this big disconnect between young people and politics. I don't think that it's that they don't care. I think that it's they haven't been engaged. I think, at least in our party, I think we've done a pretty poor job of engaging young people because, you know, if they show up to the county committee meetings, they don't necessarily want to hear the same old thing. They want to be engaged and be activated, knocking on doors and things of that nature. So when I worked for Gerald Watkins' campaign here in Paducah, I had a lot of people here at this college that talked about how they knew Gerald and they knew that he was a good man who was going to fight for education. And, you know, with the cost of tuition being what it is, lots of people come to the community college because it's affordable and they get a good, good education out of it, as did I. I'm a product of this place. And they know that Gerald's the kind of candidate who will do a good job and advocate for the issues that are important to them, you know, having a minimum wage. Anybody that says that raising minimum wage is a bad idea, I say, well, work a minimum wage job for a while. See how that goes. Uh, I think that uh, the, 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 the party just needs to do a better job of engaging younger Democrats. And I think younger Democrats are the key to that. So more, 
the more young Democrats that are involved in the party structure, uh, the more likely they're to feel connected with that. Because if you go in a room and, you know, it's a bunch of older white men, that's probably less appealing than folks that they see that are their age that can connect with them. So I serve on that state central executive committee. I'm the president of the Western Kentucky Young Democrats. Alex Cottle from Henderson, he's sort of in the same situation. That state central committee in 2016, before the party restructured, didn't have very many young Democrats on it. Now there's probably 15 or 16. And out that's of how many? Out of 41 or so. I think that's a significant uh, improvement. I think that that's going to make sure that younger Democrats' issues are heard and issues that are relevant to our communities. You know, just because we're young doesn't mean we don't understand the political climate, don't understand economics or or working class issues. You know, we are, we're working minimum wage jobs, we're relying on health insurance, you know. Uh, Obamacare was a really big deal for rural Americans and Kentucky, you know, 500,000 Kentuckians on health insurance now. How many of those were young people? How many young people didn't go to the doctor until they had that, had access to? Because, you know, if they don't have jobs uh, that provide that, then they're just out of luck. If they're sick, you know, they just wait. And preventative care is really the answer. But I think those are issues like that and just the way the party can, uh, it's the same old thing. Every time you think about politics, you think of old white guys running for president, you know, or whatever, you know. The, who ran for president this last year? They were all over 60. Uh, you know, Donald Trump was what, 71 or so, and Bernie Sanders 74, and Hillary Clinton was 69. You know, that, what I think needs to happen is younger Democrats need to step up Younger people just in general, not just Democrats, but younger people in general need to step up because I think you see all this partisanship in Washington, and you see partisanship in Frankfurt now than, than, than we've ever had, it seems like, from, from people that I know that have served up there. I think younger Democrats and younger voters are more practical, and I think they switch off because they don't feel like they're being heard or that it'll make a difference. Now, you also are a uh, senior at Murray State, Majoring in political science, of course, mm -hmm. and, and <laughs> breaking news. <laughs> exactly. Well, obviously, you were fired up about politics. You were in high school, I, I'm assuming. Now, and, and again, I, yeah. I will say this: I'll brag. <laughs> Daniel's one of the best students I had uh, here at this college. Amazing. And, and I've predicted many times he'll either be an elected official or he'll be an aide for some big shot politician. We will see. But what got you fired up about politics? You know, I, 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 really, I really don't know. I, I, you know, it's interesting. I think lots of people get into politics because they think it's going to be like the West Wing or something, and boy, <laughs> are they surprised when it's not. Because, you know, I, I, I'd always watched politics on TV and saw the news. I mean, I watched the news when I was in high school. Most kids or most folks my age at that time weren't. They didn't really care. But I was the one that was like, didn't you see on the news? And they said no. And they were like, no, who cares? And I was like, duh. But... <laughs> You know, that's, 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 you know, so when I was in high school, I had a government class, and I had a great government teacher, and it was Ms. Falder, and she really uh, would try to find ways to make it interesting, and I never had a problem telling people my opinion, and anybody that knows me knows that it never has been. You're not a shrinking violet. No, and, and so I think just the fact that I had a really good experience in government class in high school, and I had good education at Livingston County, you know, I, I thought that you know, I could make a difference. And, and you know, one of, my, one of the folks that first started getting me involved was Mike Cherry. One of the first people that I really involved, really enjoyed getting involved with was my state representative. And, uh, from Princeton. From Princeton. And he always had, he showed me that it could work. That even, you know, that, 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 and I didn't appreciate it at the time, but, you know, he was a Democrat from rural, rural western Kentucky and, and could speak to issues that were relevant to the people there. And, People knew he was genuine and knew him to his core, and I wanted to be like that. I thought that's something that I could do. And, you know, most people want to go out and start their own business or whatever, and that's great, but I, I wanted to get in the arena. Rather than complain about something and say, well, why is it this way? Why, why don't they do that? My answer is get in there and do it. And, you know, so I started working. The first campaign I volunteered for was Dan Mangiardo when he ran for the U.S. Senate in 2010. And, again, and you I... you were how old then? Uh, 17, 16. And I, th I thought it was going to be like the West Wing. I don't know what I thought. I mean, what a, what a foolish thing. But I didn't like it. I didn't like my experience, and I went home. 
you know. And then what didn't you like about it? I'd, other than he lost. Just yeah, well that too, you know. <laughs> but that's kind of an important part. But you know, I, I felt I just I don't know. I thought it was going to be like what you saw on TV, and I realized that knocking doors wasn't you know the reality, the actual thing. Uh, it's like, you know, watching food get made in a factory, a sausage factory. You don't necessarily like what you see when you're doing it, but the end, the end result can be very good. And, you know, I, I went home, and then in 2012, I volunteered for Gerald Watkins' campaign when he first ran for state rep, and I really enjoyed that because it was more local. I knew Gerald, so I could go out and say, hey, you know, I know Gerald Watkins. It was more personal to me. And, uh, and, and I really enjoyed that. So I, I got engaged that year. And then, you know, of course, Democrats won nationally. And Gerald won his seat. And we kept the House. And it was all great. Uh, and then I got my first real experience was I worked for Allison Lundergan Grimes' campaign in the spring of 14. And uh, I guess it was the summer that I switched positions and went to work for the party. Uh, Christian Motley, who, by the way, is a young Democrat running for Metro Council, in Lexington. In Lexington. He, 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 he was the executive political director of the party at the time, and he hired me to work for Gerald Watkins and Will Corsi uh, in a year that Mitch McConnell was on the ballot, and it was, it was a tough year. We were really concerned we were going to lose the House that year. <laughs> and what was so funny about that was is the CN2 uh, Spectrum News out of, out of Frankfurt uh, talked about how that Gerald's, uh, Gerald and Will's races were the number two and three most watched races um, in the state. And I thought to myself, they banked on a 21-year-old person they didn't really know to run those races. And I pulled it off, and we won. And the Daily Coast said that the reason we won was on the ground, and so the, the ground game. So I had taken the experience I'd learned in the previous couple of cycles and with Allison's campaign to really put that to work here in, in local areas. And I had lots of volunteers. And if it hadn't been for our friends in labor and the labor community, we, we certainly wouldn't have done as well as we did. They were essential. And, you know, they, they as, as most of us knew, that, 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 you know, that's the answer. You want to grow in middle class, it's the labor community. You mentioned, and basically what you're talking about is, is old-style campaigning, face-to-face, -face, knocking on doors, oh, yeah. handing out cards. You don't know what you're going to get. However, yeah. however, another part of this is, is social media. And now, again, I'm almost 68 years old. Uh, to me, a cell phone is something you might have had in prison. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't do Facebook. Don't know what it is. But this is an essential part of campaigns today, is it not? It is. It is. So and how does that work? Well, I, I'm. I'm. And you know, I'm kind of like you. I was. I was not technologically friendly for a long time. I, you know, you talked about luddites in the classroom. I wasn't too far away from that. But right. But I, I have a cell phone now, by the way. Oh, so do I. Uh, yes. I got but you're also, you, you've got to jump on me. You're on Facebook. I am too. now. Wow. That's right. Yeah. Everybody was surprised. When I first got on Facebook, they were like, I think someone stole your identity. Because yeah. <laughs> no one believed it. I mean, I got like 50 text messages from people saying, there's no way you're on Facebook. And I said, oh, but I am. Yeah. Well, it's the same with me with a cell phone. It is. Yeah. And that's, that's the reason that I got involved on theirs. Because, you know, I could help the candidates on the ground, but... You know, social media is so important, especially in rural districts, because, you know, it's a lot harder to knock on those doors. And if you can communicate through Facebook and social media, you can reach a vast amount of people that oh, you yeah. wouldn't have been able to before. And social media advertising is really important. I didn't know about this until recently, but uh, you can, add, you can, it's, it's a lot cheaper to advertise through Facebook. And it's probably more effective because you can target down to the zip code. Uh, in the community of where, where you want your ads to be seen rather than just a blanket mail ad or, or a newspaper advertisement. That, so if you advertise in my district, in the 4th House district, if you advertise in the Paducah Sun, how many people in Livingston, Crittenden, and Caldwell counties mm -hmm. are going to see it? You know, but you could 42081 and you're there. Well, of course, you mentioned newspapers. Uh, newspaper circulation is down across the country in, in large papers, medium-sized papers, and small papers. It's all going online. It is all going online. And I think that's difficult for some of us oldsters to, to get a grip on about how important this is. I think that's also why that a lot of politicians, older politicians, have got youngsters who, who know all about this stuff. Uh, well, let's get back to, uh, if we can, to uh, 2018. The, uh, the House races in Kentucky, the Senate race in Kentucky, and again, 
64 Republicans, 36 Democrats in the House, 27 Republicans, 11 Democrats in the Senate. I, I just want to stress, though, that if you think about Virginia, it was very close to that. It was, it was 66 actually 6, 34. Yeah, that's yeah. what I, I yeah. think I, so, I tripped I mean, up. they've made that kind and of And they company. almost, last I, last I saw the Democrats, it's going to be 51-49 Republican. Well, there's some of the votes still coming in, but it's very close. No yeah. one thought they would get that close. Of course you'd be worried if it was that close. Oh, anybody would. Now, <clears throat> let's get bold. How many seats do you think the Democrats will pick up net in 2018? Eight or nine. I think eight or nine is fair to say. Uh, I know candidates are going to have to work for it, just like we did with Gerald and Will's campaigns. But, you know, they're going to have to work for it. It's going to be hard, and it should be hard. But it shouldn't be, you know, you should be able to do it. And I, and I do believe they will. The issues are on our side. You know, with all of these uh, harassment scandals that are going on and all of the, you know, we're not going to look and see how much the plan costs because we don't want to know how much the plan costs. That's going to end up not just hurting teachers and the... You mean the pensions? The pension plan, yeah. yeah the and teachers I, and, and future teachers. What, what, what the biggest problem that, that I see out of all this is you know, they're talking about now taking care of the folks that are already in the system, but what about the future? How, how is Kentucky going to be taken seriously as a state if we don't value our education? We're not going to be competitive. Those teachers are going to go to other places like Missouri or Tennessee or Illinois. They're not going to come here. And we have to invest in education and prove that we are, are up for it. And, and I don't think that this plan that we're seeing is... Um, and, and they haven't released the numbers on how much is, you know, the, the last time I looked, they hadn't released the, they were going to have some experts do some numbers on it, and it, it didn't work. But, I, but, I, but back to the thing, I think that the issues are on our side, and I think there are going to be plenty of young Democrats that are running. There are already like 18 on the ballot, and there are going to be more. So it's time for... The, the, the Democratic Party hadn't necessarily built a very good bench in the past. They had always thought that their folks were going to be there because they had been. I mean, I think that's fairly reasonable to say. But, but the future is going to be with young people. We're going to be the ones that step up and, 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 and make the difference in our state. You mentioned step up. Are you concerned that a number of Democrats are stepping down? Right here in Paducah, Gerald Watkins is not going to run. There is talk that Will Corsi is not going to run. He hasn't made it official. Gerald has. Yeah. Um, I believe Rick Nelson over in Middlesbrough is, is not going to run. Uh, Jim Wayne in Louisville is stepping down, but that's a safe Democratic yeah. seat. But, it's going to be a big primary. Yeah, oh, well, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but in the case of Gerald, uh, that's an open seat. If Will does decide not to run, that's an open seat. Open seats are much more easy to pick up from the other party. Are you concerned about Gerald and possibly Will? Well, of course I'm concerned because it's an open seat, but I think we've got, I think we've got really good candidates that are going to fill that, that space, and, you know, they haven't filed yet, and they don't, you, you want to name any names? No, they, they <laughs> mean, I mean, I'm not simply out of respect to them because they're discussing it with their, with their families, and they're making the final calls, and, I mean, that's a big deal. I mean, you're talking about time being away from your family, and, you know, that drive to Frankfurt's about four hours, and, it is. Especially from here. You know, if you live, I think if you lived in a place like Versailles, you'd yeah. be talking about candidates running all the time. But, right. You right. know, this far away. But there are, we, we've got a number of good candidates, the potential candidates that are, that are looking at it. And, you know, the, the Democrats aren't the only ones with open seats now. You oh, saw in yeah. District 5 just recently, Kenny Imes has announced that he's retiring. He's going to run for county judge. Uh, now, Democrat has filed in that race. It's David Ramey. Dave Ramey. The, the uh, county Democratic Party chair. That's right. But... You have told me, and I won't press you to name names, that there may be another Democrat running in that. There are, there are another, there's another Democrat or two that's looking at running for that, for that seat too. So, I mean, I think, uh, I think that it's going to be, you're going to see a lot of Democrats that think, I think that district is absolutely winnable. With Murray State University in that district, Murray City Schools, Callaway County Schools, the Murray Callaway County Hospital, you're talking about, you know, folks that are going to be very concerned about some issues that are coming up. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's got something to do with the reason that Representative Imes is probably not running for re-election. Uh, I mean, it's a tough decision. The decision is, do you listen to your leadership in the House or the governor, or do you listen to the people of your district? And, you know, politically, that can be very dangerous. And I think 
your conscience should prevail, and I think ultimately he decided that he wanted to bow out of that state house race and run for judge executive. I mean, it's, he's going to be home. It's going to pay more money. You know, it, it certainly looks like a better choice, uh, just economically speaking. Now, David Ramey, of course, is a veteran Democratic activist. However, over in Graves County, where I live, uh, the other night there was a town hall style forum on pensions. Uh, Representative Richard Heath, a Republican, was there, uh, as was Senator Stan Humphreys, a yes, Republican. Yes, I was Kenny there for Imes, part of it. You were yeah. there. Kenny Imes was there as well. Well, after the program, a young woman in, in Graves County, who is not a political person, got so fired up, she says, I may take on Richard Heath. Now, I'm not going to mention her name because she's not sure yet. Are you seeing a lot of people who are jumping into this who have no experience? Oh, another example, obviously, is up in the 6th Congressional District, Amy McGrath. Sure. Retired Marine Lieutenant Colonel. She was a weapons officer on, on jet fighters. Uh, no political experience. She's jumping into the fray. Are you seeing that across the state? I think that's, I think you, uh, we are, and I think that's interesting. You know, I, what's happening is these issues are not just political issues. They're issues that affect every single one of us and, and working families across the state. And I think that the lady that you mentioned, who I know as well, I think that she would, she would make a fine candidate. And I think that, you, you know, it's, it's genuineness that matters. I mean, you can't talk to that person and say that they don't genuinely care about the people that live there. I mean, they're one of them. Of course they do. And, and, and with Amy McGrath, <coughs> with Amy McGrath in Lexington, you're talking about a veteran who has fought and served this country in the Air Force, uh, was the first female. Marine Corps. Marine oh, Corps. don't say that. Now, you met an enemy right there. <laughs> She's a Marine, and that's capitalized, too, by the way. But go ahead. Airplanes, you know, they're all... Yeah, I know, but, but the Marines <laughs> have aviation, too, as does the Navy, so, so we'll let you off she, the hook She's there. a retired Marine. She was the first female fighter pilot, if I remember correctly. I think, strictly speaking, Daniel, she's a weapons officer, which is the one who fires the weapons. I don't, I'm not sure she's a pilot. I could be wrong, but I think, hmm. but that's okay. That's But the, the, the point is, she served she's an aviator. Her, she has served her country, and she's coming back to represent the people of the 6th Congressional District. And I applaud that. I think that's fantastic. I think we need more people like that to run for office. I think that you know, uh, you, you serve your country, you come back, you can do it in another capacity, and I think that it's admirable and should be respected. We need people that, that aren't just politicians, but are, are real people, and I think she's a perfect example of that. Well, getting back to the state Senate, any chance for the Democrats to make any inroads there? 27 yeah. to 11. Yeah, I think there's a chance for us to take back three or four seats. I think we've done a really good job of recruiting this year. The Senate caucus has, and, and I feel confident that uh, there's a lady named Jeannie Smith who's running for the state senate in, in Warren County, and, I, and I, I've seen her on the campaign trail. She's really working hard for her, and I would bet that's one that we're going to flip. I feel really good about that one particularly. And it's not just because it's in western Kentucky, but, you know. You also probably feel pretty good about the fact that Jody Richards, the former House Speaker, is going to run in Bowling Green. He had said no, and now he says yes, right? Yes, that's, that's, that's right. He's, he is running again, and that's, that's only going to help Jeannie because, you know, Jody's kind of a legend down there. He served in the State House since 1975. He was the longest-serving speaker, speaker in Kentucky ever. history. I yeah. think that right. Uh, he served in the House since 1975, and, you know, the, they, they say, that how does, why do they stay in there that long? Well, there's a reason they kept him. It's because he does a good job. You know, people talk about term limits, how we need term limits, and my answer to that is, is term limits are called elections, and if the voters don't want to keep you, then they should vote you out. But they have elected to keep him since 1975, and I think that's a record to be proud of. Do you want to name names of any Democrats that were defeated that you may come back? Come on, be bold. Yeah, I will. I actually right. will. I, I think that I think that Jeff Taylor in Hopkinsville in District Eight. Uh, will be will will come back. I think the folks in Christian County, Hopkinsville, he only lost by 300 or so votes, and a lot of that was straight ticketing. And I don't think you're going to see that this year. I think there are going to be names on the ballot that are going to make people hold back from that straight ticket, and and uh, and you're going to see people that 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 uh, can speak to the issues in their community better than the other side. And I think Jeff's one of those people. You know, he's worked for TVA. He's passionate. He's mm -hmm. been in business development. He knows how to do it. 
and he was state rep already. I mean, it was just a surprise to me when he lost in 2016. Because he won the special election he won that, in March. We won three of the four special right. elections in March uh, of 2016. Are any of the Democrats coming back to run again besides Jeff? Uh, Brent Yance is going to run. Oh, I mean, in the special elections. Oh, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, those were on other parts of the state. And uh, you mentioned Brent Yance, of course, who was a long-serving candidate. Is it also true, though, from your political science classes under Gerald Watkins, <laughs> that the best shot to defeat an incumbent is the first time that person has to run for re-election? Probably so. Uh, I think that the it's 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 a little different than that. I, I agree that it's the first time out that, that they're the most vulnerable, but also if they've taken votes that are really damaging or they've proven themselves to be ineffective lawmakers, uh, uh, haven't addressed the issues of the district, haven't, you know, maybe voted on those on those buzz issues, those state issues that everybody wants to talk about at the national. You know, I'm amazed at how often candidates that run for state and local office pivot to national issues that have very little to do with what their actual governing capacity and capabilities will be. I think candidates should speak to the needs of their district and the folks in their community, you know, uh, and I think that that's the answer. And, you know, people that, that want to talk about these national issues, obviously they don't have, uh, they don't have the interest on the local, they just want to fill a seat. That's not about, it's not about the race. It's not about the, the, the people in the district. It's about winning. And if winning is all you want, I don't know what that says about your character, but I'd rather, I would rather lose and be on the right side than, than not. Really? Yeah. Henry Clay once said, I'd rather be right than president. Do you believe that? No. <laughs> <laughs> we have about 30 seconds. Uh, give us a quick rundown of the new party chair, Ben Self Brewer. Extraordinary. Yeah, Ben Self, he's, he's from West Six Brewing in Lexington, and he's uh, he worked for uh, John Tester out in Montana mm -hmm. and Al Franken in Minnesota and Ted Kennedy in Massachusetts. Ooh, Al Franken. Right now that might be a trick, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he, you know, I'm talking about campaign strategy in Minnesota. Though. I understand. It's a rural, rural place just like Kentucky, and I think yep. that he's going to really surprise folks. He's got the experience on fundraising and the digital uh, background. Fairly young fellow, isn't he? Very, yeah, he's in his 30s, I think. He, he, he was a very exciting, um, uh, it was very exciting on Saturday when he got uh, confirmed for mm -hmm. the position. So is this campaign free beer for all Democrats? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't partake, so it doesn't really matter. I do see. <laughs> well, we'll have to have you back again and talk about this. I'm going to hold you to those predictions. We'll see how that turns out. That's okay. fine with me. Outstanding. So my guest today, with Daniel Hurt. I'm Barry Craig. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.